uh, how do you identify skin cancer? Um, there, first of all, there are different types of skin cancers. So they are the one with pigment, which is uh, like brown color or dark color, and also the one without pigment. Usually they are like uh, pink color, uh, for example, but then with no pigment. The more common type of skin cancer is actually the one without pigment. So how do you identify these type of uh, uh, non so-called non-melanotic uh, type of uh, skin cancers? So. Uh, the most common one is something called basal cell carcinoma. They can just present like a red patch, a red uh, spot that is, has been uh, persistent uh, for quite a few months or and in fact, it could be a few years because sometimes they can be hiding on the back that you can't see. So if you notice that there's something that is keep scabbing, non-healing, uh, on and off, uh, just changing color red and pink uh, and then become pale again, and just not healing sort of area, it is important to get it checked. And, and secondly, it could present like a growth as well. For example, a, a little spot suddenly just gradually growing or suddenly grown within a few months. The one that grown within a few months uh, or a few weeks, you need to be more careful. You need to go and get it checked straight away. So anything that's growing quickly, make sure you get it checked uh, by the dermatologist ideally. However, uh, of course, uh, GP, if, you, if they're available, uh, you have to go through them first uh, if you're under NHS. Uh, so that's important. Uh, the other thing is uh, any area that is not healing. For example, it could be an, uh, you have a knock and it just doesn't heal uh, despite using uh, topical dressings. So you need make sure you get it checked uh, mm. because um, one of the presentation is non-healing ulcer as a non-melanotic type of skin cancers. So these are the main ones for the one without pigment. However, uh, or any kind of changes that you're not sure of, uh, best to get it checked because sometimes they can present very atypically. So uh, now moving on to the melanotic type, which is a one of pigment. So for usually they changes from either um, uh, an existing mold or suddenly uh, a new mold uh, that wasn't there before. So how do you identify this kind of uh, the melanotic type of skin cancers? So uh, if, if you notice a mole uh, that has been around for a long time, but suddenly changes, what are the changes you look, for, look out for? So look out for the A, remember the A, B, C, D, E rules, okay? So A for asymmetry, B for border becomes irregular, C is the color change. For example, the whole thing becomes darker uh, or one little spot has, that makes it um, just asymmetrical. And D is the diameter. Diameter it could be uh, spread sideways or it becomes taller and that is grown in size as well. Uh, so, and then E is evolution. Evolution means uh, any kind of changes, to be honest. Uh, uh, for example, um, one suddenly becomes uh, itchy for no reasons and persistently so, or if it suddenly bleeds when you haven't knocked a mole, uh, and any type of changes, it doesn't look right and or your wife or husband or partner uh, are not ha happy with the look of it, something has changed. Best to get this checked because something uh, is, is not quite right. Back to the A bit is asymmetry means uh, it's, it's no longer symmetrical, like a round or oval shape, it's, it's lopsided basically. Uh, so that's uh, that's one type of uh, melanoma we're talking about. And however, uh, the other types, for example, uh, you never have a mole. Suddenly, uh, a new mole appeared and it becomes very jet black. Uh, it stands up from the rest of the other moles and you never had it before. And again, if it, you see an ugly duckling mole, make sure you get it checked as well. Uh, or sometimes uh, it can start like a freckle. Uh, freckle can also change uh, again, follow the A, B, C, D, E rules. Uh, one example I want to tell you is uh, a gentleman, for example, uh, a, a patient of mine uh, went on holiday in Spain. I live in U United Kingdom. He was driving all the way from London to Spain. So it's like over a, uh, a couple of days, intense sun exposure. Uh, he was driving, however, he had his sun roof on, so uh, uh, open, so because uh, to get some air, and he had the direct sunlight onto his forehead on one spot. By the time he got to Spain, uh, southern Spain, uh, there was uh, just completely sunburned, very severely sunburned. And a year later, 
he came to me with a black spot. He's, he's otherwise, uh, he never had skin cancer before. So, uh, so this is unusual for him. And he remembered the sunburn episode. And it, turned, it was only a three millimeters uh, dark jet black sort of mole. And it turned out to be a melanoma. So he did the right thing. It was a superficial type of skin cancer. Fortunately, he was wise to get it checked. So just an example. Uh, you know, intense sunburn can cause uh, melanoma itself. So it's very important to be careful. For skin cancer diagnosis, uh, there are the main tests we can do is actually to do skin biopsy. Uh, before that, often uh, as a dermatologist, we use a dermatoscope, which is like a, a magnified uh, um, a super magnified type of uh, lenses that we can look at the structure of the skin lesions uh, very closely. Uh, uh, if it is suspicious, then we will uh, make sure that uh, the test like uh, send it for histology, for example. That means uh, we need to uh, biopsy it. Biopsy involves uh, giving uh, infiltrating the skin with local anesthetics uh, to numb it, that area. I'd like going to the dentist, do a little injection very quickly, and it will be nice and numb. So that we, depends on the size of the lesion, sometimes uh, we probably, if it's small enough, we probably just cut it out. Uh, the important thing is, however, we need to make sure it's sent for test. And the test would be to be examined under microscope. It will be stained and special staining, and the whole process can take a few days uh, to a week or two, depends on where you are. And then the pathologist will read it and, and look at the cells and decide on whether it's cancerous or not. That I would say that is the main diagnosis, uh, the first stage. And sometimes if it's too big, we only take a little sample and send it, we call it biopsy, skin biopsy. Again, we send it for test uh, under microscope or to have histology report by a histopathologist. Uh, to confirm whether there's anything suspicious, cancerous. So that's the most important test, I would say. And it all depends on what the first stage of this uh, report showed. If it turned out to be something cancerous, and most cancer, uh, skin cancers, uh, once you have removed them, you don't have to worry about any other treatment. Uh, once it's removed, uh, it depends on the type. Uh, we may have to follow up the patients and sometimes and we can just discharge a patient and give you advice about sun protection and all that. However, there are different types, like for example, the different stages of uh, skin cancer, like melanoma, uh, then it depends on the staging. We may have to arrange like uh, um, a scan, a CT scan, an MRI scan, or sentinel lymph node biopsy. It, it's, it depends on the type of skin cancers uh, one has. So it's important to discuss uh, with your uh, and a specialist, a skin cancer and a specialist, or your dermatologist to find out what is the best thing uh, forward. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, after the diagnosis of skin cancer, because they're different type of skin cancer, uh, the treatment is very different. Uh, some of the skin cancer, most of the skin cancers, once you have cut it up with a good margin, uh, then we don't, you don't have to need any more treatment after that. However, for example, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, they are very common. Uh, however, if it's melanoma, it depends on the staging of the skin cancer itself. Uh, it depends on how deep it is. If it's the superficial, once again, after you cut it up, uh, it's a measure of follow-up uh, for so long. Uh, usually it's like, uh, after the superficial type after a year, we can let you off. Uh, after, however, some of the intermediate type, we have to follow up for say uh, three monthly for three years and afterwards is six monthly for two years before being discharged. And if it's the uh, stage three and above, uh, we also need to perform a sentinel lymph node biopsy may be offered to you, or we may also uh, arrange a CT scan or different type of this. Uh, scans to assess uh, whether it has spread anywhere else. But most majority of skin cancers, I have to say, it's just uh, usually uh, easily dealt with, with uh, cutting it out and then send it for tests and, and that's it. And pretty much uh, we're going to keep an eye on your skin 
uh, with your yourself to help to monitor your skin. If you notice any problem, uh, you need to go and see a uh, dermatologist uh, sooner rather than later in view of the past history. To, to diagnose uh, skin cancer, really, you must see a good dermatologist um, who can recognize the skin cancer, I would say. To prevent skin cancer, uh, it is important uh, uh, to have a proper sun protection because the majority of skin cancer is caused by sun exposure, particularly in people with uh, very fair skin, um, blue eyes, uh, uh, and also um, light uh, blonde or ginger hair. For people with this kind of skin, we call it skin type one, Fitzgerald, Fitzpatrick uh, skin type one uh, is more likely to develop um, skin cancer. So uh, it is important uh, to make sure you cover up. That, that is number one most important thing. The sun is very intense between 11 o'clock and three o'clock. So to make sure that when you go out uh, during this time, to make sure you wear a hat because they're wearing a hat with a broad brim type. It helps to cover the face and also the ears. Don't forget that because uh, you know, sunblock is very important, but to cover up is even more important. So to wear a hat, for example, to wear clothing, uh, long sleeves uh, when it's intense sun and wear trousers if you can. Uh, when you go out uh, during between 11 and 3 o'clock, uh, if you need to do exercise, try to do it before 11 o'clock and after 3 o'clock. And uh, when uh, there are times that you can't really cover up very well, um, and uh, then you need to remember to wear sunblock. The higher factor, the better. I would say factor 50 and above. This is for UVB protection. Don't forget the UVA protection as well. Usually in the sunblock, uh, sunscreen uh, label, you see it as a uh, three stars, four stars, and five stars. I would say go for four and five stars. Uh, that would help to block the sunblock more efficiently. And don't forget, you need to reapply sunblock every hour or every two hours when you're outdoors because uh, the amount of uh, sunblock we use is probably not as uh, thick as the manufacturer uh, when they do the test. So the, high, the more you put, uh, the more helpful it is and repeat it every hour or two if necessary because it sweats off and you kind of touch your skin. It just wipes off the sunscreen.